Greater generosity applies harvest principles. That's the first thing to get. That greater generosity applies when you say harvest principles. Yeah, I mean this. You reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. And let me give you the other part of a harvest, the harvest principle. You reap directly in proportion to what you sow. You sow a little, you reap a little. You sow a lot, you reap a lot. And those who are generous know this. They know this because they live this. You see how this works. I've witnessed it in my life time and time and time again. I've said it before. I will say it again. I've always lived a standard of living higher than my, the amount of money that I make. And it is, in my opinion, solely the result of the harvest principles in application. You, you reap what you sow. Great generosity equals great harvest. Small generosity, small harvest. No generosity, no harvest. It's, it's just that basic. Generosity is absolutely the foundation. Not, not the top, but the bottom, the beginning of a greater life. You, it isn't something you do at the, you know, after you've done everything else. It, you don't give to God's work after you've done everything else that you want to do and if there's any left over. It's foundational. It's basic. Let's just think for a moment, because you know not many of us are farmers. Now again, on the internet campus, some of you, in fact, may be farmers, and so you'll know more about this than myself, but to those of you that I'm speaking to today in a suburban area of a city in America, we're not too familiar with farming. We don't live in an agrarian culture. We live in a, a technological one. But if we were to just think for a moment about farming, what is it that holds the farmer back from, say, you know, sowing more seed? And I, I think there's a couple of things. One would be that he's concerned that he won't have enough seed to finish all his planting if he gets too generous at certain plates, places in the planting. Like, I, I won't have enough to, to finish it out if I get too generous in the beginning. I think, secondly, he's concerned just about the cost of the seed. I mean, if I'm going to sow more seed, i got to buy more seed. If I have to buy more seed, I have to spend more money. And I think thirdly, in terms of how a farmer might think, is that, you know, he has concerns about the weather. What about the sun? What about the rain? What if it doesn't cooperate and my harvest doesn't happen? And all of those, I suppose, are concerns that one might have as a farmer. Now think about those concerns in terms of a generous life. How many of us are concerned that if we give, we won't have enough for what we want to finish in our lives, the things that we want to do? How many of us think in terms of, man, giving means I've got less for myself. It's going to cost me something. I don't know if I want to do that. What about the weather? What about circumstances? If I start being generous with my money, what happens if I lose my job or unexpected expenses come into my life or something else happens like that? And all of these kinds of concerns which the Bible would all categorize as a lack of faith or a lack of trust in God, cause us then to not be generous, even though generosity is what God wants for us. What we do know is that the soil is good, and the climate is right, and God's harvest principles work. They work. They work and work and work. They always apply. They will work. If we do our part, God will do his part. 